Hi, this is Stephen, and this is Astro Indicator Update, Excursions into Practical Astrology. This is episode 32, and today's date is March Friday, March 27th. Uh, markets have not yet closed, but I wanted to uh, get this episode done today. So what's happening? We're going to be looking at Biden's astrology, look at the markets like we usually do, in particular the relating to the Dow Jones Industrials, and briefly touch upon what's going on in the oil markets and what its ramifications might be. I have to tell you, I'm starting to get um, a little bit of my allergy season kick in, so I may be drinking some tea or coughing, clearing my throat, and I dare not do that in public, but um, I might do it now and then with this video. Um, so here's Joe Biden's astrology. Again, this is his natal chart in the middle here. This is his information, today's date. And as you, if you've been following the news, which I'm sure you have, there is some concern about Biden's uh, cognitive capabilities right now. Um, he does seem to have trouble speaking clearly at times. Well, I was curious to look at his, his astrology and in his transits, which are the outer ring, where the positions of the planets are right now in the sky, he has a fairly important transit that's challenging him right now. And it is Saturn right there. I'll draw you, draw you a little um, arrow. Saturn right now is 90 degrees away from his moon. And every seven years or so, people go through, I mean, even more often than that, but people go through usually a strong Saturn transit. And it, oftentimes it doesn't last too long. However, for Biden, right now, it's, it's hitting his moon. It's not quite exact. It'll be exact later this week, but he's been feeling it for a number of months. And, um, and it's going to continue for a long time. And the reason for that is that in May, Saturn stations and grows retrograde. And so this aspect is in play with him all the way through June. It's a very long Saturn transit. So what's it mean? Well, with him, it could mean a lot of things. I mean, for everyone, the moon deals with our self-image, uh, how we feel. Um, he's probably very aware that maybe something isn't perfect in, in his thinking, and it's having an effect on how he feels about himself, feels about his capabilities in public. In addition, Biden has had issues with, uh, with his back, with discs in his neck, and in, with Saturn transits, Typically, people have, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen every time for everyone, but f often back issues um, get worse or they surface. And uh, he may be having that. He may, I mean, this is, I'm going out on a limb, I don't know for sure, but he may be taking pain medications, something along that line. In addition, f almost for everyone, and I am someone in their 60s, and so I've gone through my share of Saturn uh, periods. Usually people tend to feel like their the aging process has accelerated somewhat. I mean, they may go through periods afterwards at a later date where their their health is um, regained or you know, they they tend to, things tend to slow down. But in this case, you know, this is a long Saturn trans, transit for Joe Biden. I'm, you know, I'm sorry to say. I'm not a big fan. That's my bias. I'm not a big fan of Joe because um, he tended to back every, uh, you know, every uh, military excursion that we were in in the Middle East. And I'm, uh, I'm, anti-war. But, um, you know, it's always a little sad to see someone who's 
um, losing their faculties a little bit, and that may be the case here. And this this aspect is not helping. This aspect, in fact, is contributing to it because he, the you know there's tendency towards depression. It's a very challenging aspect for everyone at any any age, particularly to the moon. And so other things in his chart, if you're just interested, like many politicians that I've talked about, he his he's got a strong Mars. Mars in his chart, natal chart, is squaring um, Pluto. I could draw in that again if you need a visual. Um, it's not a tight square, but it is would be considered one. And so you know this is someone who. Uh, has issues with his temper um, and um, you know that's one of the things that he's, he's, he's had to learn how to deal with in his life he may be somewhat compulsive as well it gives him a lot of willpower um, a desire to you know very competitive streak a desire to gain you know positions of authority things of that nature but it is it is a challenging aspect <clears throat> in addition he has his son conjunct venus and uh, this is this helps to balance out this mars um, tendency um, he may identify as being someone who um, is, um, you know, attractive and, and someone who is, you know, sophisticated and, and uh, polished in his demeanor. And he may have had that identity for a very long time. And, and now it, it's, uh, it's uh, troubling to him if, he's, if he can't... Um, probably speak and and present himself in a way that you know he's accustomed to when he was early, when he was younger so anyway I just wanted to put that out because this aspect is lasting a long time okay let's look at some markets here let's get my rid of my lines and um, so we have some this is the most important thing uh, aside from the Biden comment uh, this is the thing that's happening with the Dow we've had a major bounce uh, you know, almost a 20% bounce here after a 35% or 40% drop. I don't know what it was. <clears throat> but the thing is, in, in again, just briefly, you know, I use, I combine astrology with uh, traditional technical analysis. All these horizontal lines are support and resistance areas along with the green lines here. The vertical lines are dates in the past and dates coming up in the future where I felt there were important astrological elements taking place uh, specifically related to this market okay I mean if you go back in my other videos I you know for several days afterwards you know I, I, I knew that this was historically a transition point and it didn't really show up for a few days and I think I did my video right about there and um, you know this was a fairly strong and this was the 20th of March ahead of time I said that something's happening on the 20th of March and we kind of stabilized we bounced in the US chart which I talked about last week I really felt like the Jupiter in the Jupiter's energy increasingly becoming stronger in the US chart was going to maybe turn the tide a little bit and help us see an end of the tunnel a light at the end of the tunnel regarding you know the challenges our country is going through and in a way it seems like that increasing Jupiter energy is is reflected here in the markets well we have two dates coming up this one right there which is um, let me look at my notes is just next Tuesday it's March 31st okay and then after that we have uh, actually there's a couple things happening but I just indicated it as as, uh, uh, as April um, 7th and 8th so this last line is kind of a combination well this line in the history of my research and that's all I'm doing I'm not recommending any trading I'm just sharing with you my research this was a very usually a very significant date 
and oftentimes is quite bullish, okay? So, you know, you can't always, uh, you know, rely on the directional, you know, history of some of these dates. But normally big moves, significant moves take place, um, in, you know, in close proximity to these dates. So this one, next Tuesday, March 31st, mark it on your calendar. You know, I'm leaning in the area that we're, we may go higher. And we definitely may go higher if we break through that horizontal line. Again, I'm using the ETF DIA, but all these prices on the right here, if you just add a, if you just add a couple zeros, actually, you'll get the price of the Dow. But if we head, if we get through, um, you know, 22,300, break through this 20-day moving average, we could head higher. But we have to be careful because at a certain point, you know, the hedge funds are going to jump in. They're going to short this thing because we have a, a boatload of unpredictable economic um, fallout coming down the road. And, um, and so, you know, we may get a 50% bounce here. I think it's a dead cat bounce, to be honest with you, which means I think we may be heading back down. But I wanted to point out that the next two astro dates coming up, the first one, you know, my bias is, is it oftentimes is bullish. However, the second one, particularly on um, April 8th, okay, is a, can be a reversal date, high volatility energy. So there's a potential, I'll underline that word, there's a potential for this market to go higher, and then when we get to April 8th, we could see a reversal. Okay, let's move on. Okay, gold. Well, gold definitely has had a nice bounce. It's up above the 20-day moving average. Um, we can look back at past astro dates here. We pretty much hit it again. I could see a number of things happening on March 20th, not only for the Dow, but for, the, for gold. Happened right here. Well, gold doesn't have a lot coming up. Uh, in fact, um, I need to watch this closely because the next strong date, uh, I'll give you two, even though I haven't drawn the second one in here, but the next strong date is April, actually first and second. This historically, from my research, is, is a reversal date. So we may just get some volatility. I mean, the fundamentals for gold and silver, I mean, are, are exceptionally strong right now. I mean, they're running out on the retail side of things. The refineries, many refineries are not open. I mean, the fundamentals are great, but it's just a matter of, you know, how much can the bullion banks keep the price down? And I mean, gold and silver reflect the, you know, have a, you know, generally speaking, kind of reflect the mood of the market. And if they're screaming, you know, moving higher, then people think that things are, getting worse. And so there is this incentive by the big players to keep a lid on the price of gold and silver. So we'll see what happens. But this date is often a reversal date, okay? However, if you come out, and I don't know why I didn't draw it in, if you come out to April 24th, mark that down, that is a very strong date historically to be bullish in gold. And so we just may get some sideways movement here during the month of April. Um, we'll watch it closely, but uh, that date, April 1st and 2nd, uh, mark it on your calendar because we could get a pullback to some degree. Silver, not much going on. Mostly, um, oh, I think actually my, my, my charting program. I, I knew I drew this line in there and it's now it's not showing up. Sometimes my charting program, uh, which I get for free, 
um, is not leaving my vertical lines in there. And I see that that's happened. Well, anyway, there's not much happening in silver, except it too has this strong, oh, had this strong um, reversal energy just recently. Oh, and this is what I mean to say. This, this one right here is the same energy that's happening in gold, you know, in about a week. So we'll have to see. Silver could do a little pullback here or come down a little bit. Um, you know, it, it's dropped a lot. It needs to be a lot higher. I think this is a buying opportunity. If I had, you know, if I had the funds to do it, I would be buying. Let's move on. Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin is riding a trend line. It's broken through its 20-day moving average. Um, it's got a crossover in the MACD down here. All these things look fairly good. It has to, you know, be nice if it stayed above that support level right there. But what does the astrology say? Well, it's not exceptionally strong, but we do have something significant happening on Monday. This is Monday. And then on April 3rd is this last date. Um, Again, like some of these other markets, we have we have some volatility kicking in for all these markets around that early April date. But um, this one, Monday, I think could be bullish for uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we'll have to see. But not exceptionally strong bullish energy uh, in the Bitcoin market right now. I mean... Um, Bitcoin has been responding to the astrology well, but but predicting its direction has been a little tricky. You can see we definitely hit a top, continuation, bounce, and so forth. So let's look at the U.S. dollar. Um, this is a somewhat of a complicated story, but the dollar you know blew up higher. Um, it had, <laughs> oddly enough, the dollar astrology has been very fitting look at let me look at my notes really quickly so on March 18th for example you know that was just a classic reversal astrology energy and it, and we got a downturn immediately afterwards and then what do we have coming up here on April 3rd well on April 3rd we have um, you know, if I just read the symbols in astrology, this would be bearish, a continuation of this, you know, fall. Okay, we'll have to see, but it really, you know, presents itself that way. Um, many, you know, financial entities around the world needed dollars to uh, to pay debt, while and and that's the reason why we got my estimation why we got this big rally. Okay. Now some of that's being taken care of and all this money printing, I mean, trillions and trillions of dollars is going into the economy and, uh, you know, debt levels are just going to be, you know, going through the roof and, I mean, we're in a major, you know, um, calamity economically and I really hope that, you know, some researchers in the world who, yeah, specifically some at Stanford who think that, um, the epidemic panic may have been exaggerated, even though the measures taken to, uh, you know, slow it down were appropriate. Uh, some of these research, his name is Levitt, he won the Nobel Prize, I think. You can do a search for it. But he really thinks that, you know, we're going, this, this uh, epidemic, pandemic is going to subside much more quickly than we think. And I really, if in terms of our economy and getting people back to work, I really hope he's right. Um, because the amount of stimulus that we, we're pouring into banking system, into corporations and whatnot, it should, you know, um, you know, almost by definition, undervalue, undermine the value of the dollar. And so we should get a continuation. Um, looking ahead, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say we're going to continue down. Oops, I just went backwards. Sorry about that. But we may get a bounce in the dollar at the end of April. 
Okay, finally, I'm talking too much, but finally, this is a fairly good article by Steve St. Angelo. He really is sort of an expert in this area, tracking uh, the price of oil and um, and how much it costs now to get oil out of the ground. Well, as everyone maybe knows who listens to me at times, um, you know, the price of oil has just crashed and it's great for the consumer. However, it's not profitable to be uh, getting oil through um, fracking and all that, um, those methods at all. And so this is going to have a huge impact on the loans that were made to these fracking businesses. And, you know, they're going to, I'm sure there's going to be defaults if this continues and it's going to affect the banking system and so forth and so on. So people should be up on this because this has, this is going to play out and have an effect on the dollar. And, um, and so this article was a good summation of his, I mean, he's been studying this for a really long time. You can do a search for Steve St. Angelo, SRS Rocco Report. I, uh, you know, I, I, you can go to his website and read this. I got it off uh, goldseek.com. And it's a much longer article with very well done graphs. But watching the oil market, I mean, we, we may really like it when it comes to, you know, filling our tank, but the, you know, the fallout, the ramifications of this uh, are big. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, my name is Steven. I mostly have an art and psychology background, but, uh, and, but I've been studying astrology for 40 years. And I've had, a let's say, a very strong interest in the financial markets uh, for 25 at least, and have been applying my astrology to the markets for that period of time. Uh, you know, for, since I've started this site, I've been saying I'm a hard money and cryptocurrency advocate. If you found this interesting, consider subscribing because I do these somewhat irregularly. So if you would like to be notified, um, consider subscribing, liking, and all that good business. So uh, thank you for listening, and um, we'll see you next time.